now I want to um, get us back to uh, this idea of comparing PFR and CSTR size and thinking about Levenshpiel plots. So let me let me go ahead and start a new page here. I'm going to um, start. Uh, let's start. So let's uh, make comparisons between uh, CSTR and PFRs by plotting. Plotting. Okay. So we're going to plot conversion. Um, in a few different ways. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with, um, let me change color here, okay, CSTR, design equation for conversion. We're really interested in understanding essentially um, dynamics between conversion, uh, not dynamics necessarily, but the relationship between conversion and volume. That's what we're trying to figure out. Uh, and we want to be able to plot that. So we can go back to this CSDR design equation. Um, this is our VR over um, the molar flow rate of A coming in. Um, equals the conversion of A over minus RA. Okay, and then we'll write the PFR design equation that had to do with conversion. And see, this is why we don't only want the one that has the resonance time format. This conversion format might be useful to us. Well, in that case, we had a, a DVR. Um, so that's FA naught on the left-hand side. And here we have um, DXA over minus RA. Okay. So um, what, do, what do we have? In, in this case, um, let's let's um, let's note that first of all, F A naught is a constant, so this doesn't necessarily matter too much. Um, and what we've got is um, conversion in the numerator in both cases. Um, in this case, the derivative. In this case, uh, just the um, the normal term. And we've got um, R A on the bottom. So because of this, um, let's try doing the following. Uh, let's plot um, one over minus RA versus conversion of A. Um, so what are we doing here? Well, what is this term? I guess we can see where this comes from, but let's talk about conceptually what what, it, what is this? Um, this is the inverse, uh, the inverse of the rate of disappearance of A. Um, so, if we want to um, talk through it a little bit, um, we know. Uh, let's let's think about the following um, here on the side. Um, we know, we know that at least for normal kinetics, I'll go into what that means a little bit later. Um, our rate of disappearance of A, that's our um, reactant. We'll just, we'll just focus on the denominator here. Um, we know that minus R A, is usually highest when, and let's think about this. Um, so let's pause here. Our rate of disappearance of A is highest when, what conditions? Is it, would it be usually the, the beginning of the reaction or the end? Um, normal kinetics implies, you know, normal uh, rate law. Uh, so if we're just imagining what RA equals, you know, usually we have something uh, like RA equals maybe, um, you know, uh, uh, minus KCA. Um, so this minus RA is usually highest when um, our concentration is highest, right? So when CA is high, 
uh, or when conversion is low. So um, just thinking about these concepts, when CA is high, that's when our reaction hasn't happened yet very much, at least in, in um, this part of whatever reactor we might be in, uh, maybe thinking about a, um, a, a PFR, say, or a smaller CSTR. So that's, that's uh, sort of a relationship that we um, expect here. Um, let me also then comment um, that minus RA uh, gets smaller our rate of disappearance of A um, gets smaller as conversion increases. Okay, so let's um, let's go ahead and, and look at a plot here. Um, so we're gonna plot a CSTR. Uh, so we're gonna have conversion on the x-axis and one over uh, minus RA on the, on the y-axis. And let's remember that um, for a CSTR, we have uh, V over FA naught um, equals conversion times uh, the inverse um, rate of uh, formation of A, or inverse rate of disappearance of A. Okay, so what does this look like? I'll try to use a few different colors here. Um, well, let me just start with, I guess, um, this curve here that represents what we just talked about. This is trending this way, this curve. Um, we, that's why I just uh, mentioned on the previous slide. Um, let's go to it. Um, all this discussion here about how RA is usually highest and then gets smaller as XA increases. Well, this is one over that. So if you have one over something that's highest, it starts small and then it gets large. And that's what we're seeing in this plot here. Okay, so then if we're at a specific part on this um, plot uh, that corresponds with whatever conversion we're at, that is um, the rate one over the, the rate of disappearance of A. Uh, and so what we have then, based on this formula, um, our, our volume is, is basically proportional to, um, by this constant, the, the product of these. The product, graphically, is all of this region, all of it through the curve. Okay, so what about a CSTR? I mean, sorry, what about, what about a PFR? What happens in this case? Uh, so let's go ahead and, and draw the plot again. We'll have one over minus RA. Whoa, oh, uh, great, we, okay. Ah, good. Okay, I could restore it. <laughs> All right. Um, we still have the same curve because uh, we're not. We're saying that the um, the rate law is the same. Nothing else has changed. Um, but now the the design equation for a PFR is different. Okay. Uh, what is it? Well, we have instead of v, we have dv. I've just dropped the r subscript. And instead of um, conversion, we have dxa times one over ra. Oh, okay. Um, and we'll imagine taking the integral of both of these to get at what the volume would be. Um, so, so what does the integral mean in this case? Um, integral means area under the curve. Okay, I know that's really basic. I probably didn't need to write that here, but we're emphasizing a point um, yeah, related to these Levenspiel plots because what it means is if you're trying to achieve the same conversion, uh, imagine that these are, are 
positioned at the same conversion value. I know these graphs look a little different, but they're meant to be the same. Well, well now um, for a given conversion, your volume um, is just going to be related to the area under the curve. Ta-da. Uh, that's why this is one easy visual way um, to see why your PFR volumes uh, under normal kinetics uh, are smaller than your CSTR volume. Um, and so this, this concept, um, these are Levenspiel plots. Levenspiel was a uh, prolific uh, scientist and inventor um, for uh, chemical reaction engineering. And so um, before we conclude on this topic, I just want to also mention how Levenspiel plots are not just useful for making this point, but they help you think about reactors in series. So let's go back, let's do one more thing. Um, so back to uh, the three CSTRs in series. I'm gonna draw one more Levenspiel plot here, one over minus RA, XA. And here we have, again, because of our normal kinetics, a curve like that. We wanted to, let's say, get to this target conversion which from that previous example was 0 0.875. Okay, so um, if we just had the one CSTR, so I'll, uh, I'll try to use red and yellow here. So one CSTR case, the single CSTR, then we're looking at a volume that is uh, indicated by all of this. So I'm gonna use, uh, try to use faint lines, but that didn't come out very faint. Um, okay, well, hopefully you'll be able to see um, this yellow on top of it. Uh, here we go, let's try yellow. And so now if we're gonna use three CSTRs, okay, I think the yellow is visible. Three CSTR case. Um, well, then what was happening um, was we're sort of going along the curve, um, not necessarily in thirds, in fact, we know that the volume was equal three ways. So we're going, our first split, and that might be too far along. This is probably not, not to scale. Um, but you can imagine that it looks something like this, where our first uh, CSTR looked like that, and our second like that, and our third here. Um, so I'm going to try to color that in. Um, this way. So imagine that each of these rectangles uh, is of similar, each of these rectangles is of similar volume or equal volume to one another. What this is showing is, um, let me see if I can do the last one here. Okay, so here's our three um, CSTR case. And you can clearly see why the yellow area is smaller than the red area and how the increasing number of CSTRs uh, starts to look more and more like the area under a curve. And this is a mathematical way to sort of see how uh, more and more CSTRs in series start to look like a PFR. So uh, what are some conclusions to draw from here? Well, uh, what I wanna challenge you to think about when we think about reactors in series and some of the problems that you might face is does your curve always look like this? Um, so, you know, what are some situations where maybe uh, PFR is gonna be not your best bet? Um, you know, if you were to use a CSTR and a PFR, Maybe what order do you go in? Um, and, and so just think about those questions. Uh, I'm sure you'll see some, some homework or practice problems related to those. Uh, and yeah, that's it for 11 spiel points.